Hi, I'm John, your Fix-It Addict. Today, we're going to check out this Carrier 4-ton variable speed Infinity air handler. What's happening is we're getting a Fault 41, which is uh, correlates to the ECM electronic control module on the variable speed blower motor, not reporting the RPM correctly back to the motherboard, the main control board. So this could be happening because maybe the possibility the shaft is hunting or moving slightly due to bad bearings. So that could possibly be it, considering it's a 25 year old unit. So we're gonna take off the cover and we're gonna see if we have rough movement when we rotate the fan blower. So let's check it out. Before starting any work on the blower, you definitely want to flip off the circuit breakers. In this case, uh, you're going to have two sets of circuit breakers. One's going to be for the heater part or the heater coils in the air handler. The second one's going to be for the control and um, the control module and such in the lower voltage part. So in this case, that is one and two. Now we're safe. Now that the uh, four bolts are removed, we can remove the cover. It's pretty heavy, so the cover's got a lip on the bottom, so it won't pull straight out from the bottom. However, the top doesn't. So, kind of wiggle the top loose, and then lift up. There's a lip. And it comes off. There's our blower motor. We're gonna get this thing done yet. Here's our blower motor fan. Again, make sure the breakers are off before you're doing, doing any work on this. You could lose a finger real easy in here. Let's rotate it. It doesn't rotate easily. It should spin pretty freely. And it's making kind of a grinding sound. Here's our motor and the electronic control module you see is plugged in the top. We're gonna remove, start by removing these harness connectors. Keep in mind, the ECM here has capacitors in it. These could still have a charge on them. This is a 220 motor. So it could give you a hell of a zap, knock you off the ladder. So be very careful when you're removing these and isolate them so they don't spark against the frame and blow out your control board. There's a few dollars right there. And then we're gonna remove these screws up here, at which point this blower motor assembly slides out towards the camera. You can see the channel right there. This thing is very heavy, so you might want some help. Since you're up on a ladder, you could hand it down to somebody. But I think we're going to have to change this motor. Okay, I've removed some of these screws. Take your quarter-inch drive. I've loosened these already. This bracket, this L bracket comes off. This is a retainer. Now, the unit is free to slide. Let's remove the harness connectors. Don't be holding on to anything that's metallic when you do this. If you got a grip stop, make sure it's not metallic. If you need a balance point, the top connectors lift off. Lift straight out while they're supposed to. Oh, here, I'm touching the front. Once those are loose, this will slide out. Okay, now that I've got the connectors off, we can slide the motor out. This one connector has side pinch releases. The other connector has a, uh, a parallel side release as well. So you gotta press that when you lift the connector up. Press these two down when you pull the other connector off. Now we'll remove the motor. Remember, this thing is heavy. It's best if you have somebody 
close by. If not, have your ladder ready to set it down on. That wasn't too bad. Well, here's the blower motor out of the unit and on my work table. Make sure it's a solid work table because you're going to have to be slugging this motor out of here. You need a good base to work. Notice when I rotate this, it just freezes up. Definitely bad motor bearings. It doesn't want to free spin at all and it's not hitting the case. Well, we're going to have to change that motor. Well, here's an issue right off. The fan motor shaft, or the motor shaft, is all rusty. That is going to inhibit the fan from sliding off the shaft. Once we loosen this set bolt, it's, we're going to be fighting it all the way. We need to clean this shaft up quickly with a Dremel. set screw from the fan collar that holds it to the flat of the shaft. I'm going to use a 5 16 open on. Kind of hold on to the fan. Make sure you got a good fitting wrench. Do not do this with a crescent wrench. You'll round this off and then you'll be over at Ace hunting for a new set screw. Break that loose. Take it off. Put it somewhere or <laughs> you don't lose it. Now we've got to separate the, the motor. The motor could only go that way. The fan is between the cowling, so it won't pull out with the motor. The motor shaft has to pull out when we flip this over. So we need to break this rust loose and we're gonna be fighting this thing all day. So we're gonna use a brass hammer, just a small brass hammer. And we're gonna lightly tap around. Tap around now. The fan color. And then a couple of taps this way. Gently. You don't want to use a metal hammer on this. You'll round this off just like the brass is rounded off here. This is more or less the sacrificial metal. It'll round off versus this. If you mushroom this end, shaft end, you'll never get this fan off. You'll be here with a Dremel grinder. Oh. It. don't need that so also do not use penetrating oil or any kind of uh, lubricants in here it's going to drip into your fan housing and you're going to smell it in your house for a month you don't want to put anything introduce anything to the airstream because uh, it could be hazardous and create an odor in the house the oil could also get into the ECM pickup so we tap around here, give it a tap that way. If you don't have a brass hammer, get a piece of aluminum. This is an aluminum, uh, just a simple aluminum wall bracket and put it between your hammer and the shaft. So it takes the beating. Now we'll flip this over. And Let's look on the other side of this blower. Here you can see where the motor is attached. There's, of course, the three bolts that hold it in place. But around the motor, there's a, a cage, kind of a grip, that holds onto it. And there's a side bolt that squeezes it and holds it in place. And there's rubber isolators. Make sure these are in good shape. They, they tend to just go brittle with age. Notice your relation to the end of the shaft and the end of the fan to the edge of the cowling. You want to keep it as close as possible yet not hitting. That's going to become an issue later when we go to install a new motor and then we set our spacing. We want to keep this area close as possible to increase the efficiency of the fan.
Okay, now we're going to take a 7 16 quarter inch drive, loosen these three. There are nuts welded to the housing, so you don't have to worry about anything falling in there. Support the end of the shaft with the vice grips. Bring the motor over to the edge of the table. Support the bottom of the motor with your hand. Give it a couple of spins to get it back down. Release the vice grip. Ball right out. go to spin the shaft it's very difficult the bearings are gone this thing should spin with your fingers that was our fault 41 I'm gonna spin the motor over so you can expose the clamping side and we'll take the vice grips again and we'll grasp one end of this bolt continue to loosen that until you're able to slide the motor out. One thing to note is the position of the motor in the bracket before you take it out. These holes are going to need to line up in the housing when we put it back together. So there's also only so much cord length for the uh, cable assembly cords, connectors. If you turn this motor too far the other way, the cables won't reach, you'll have to take the whole thing out again and spin this around. So note your positions in relation to these two in relation to this connector. It seems to be right in the middle. So when we reassemble the new motor into here, put it in the same spot in the bracket that this one is. Just to make life easier, I'm going to make a mark on this bracket and the old motor. Of course, we'll put a new motor in, but we'll know then where that bracket's going to line up with the new motor. Now that we've got the motor out, we could read the data plate and see what type of motor it is, model number, and voltage, amperage, RPM, and rotation in relationship to the shaft. And then head over to eBay. You could either find a uh, used motor or a rebuilt. Oftentimes you could find a new motor. Well, here's our new motor. Let's be able to find it on eBay with the ECM module. Oftentimes you could just get the motor and reuse the old ECM module. There's, there's probably nothing wrong with it. It was working, it was just throwing codes. If you look at the shaft rotation, I gotta really struggle to spin this one, and this one just free spins. Big difference. It matched up the size, the data plate, the rotation, the voltage. We got us a keeper. Let's get it together. So reassembly of the bracket is pretty much in reverse order. Notice we made the marks here earlier with a magic marker. We try to correspond this bracket, the new bracket, as close as we can to that pre-existing mark. Keep the edge of the bracket just above the vent holes for the fan. And get this lined up as much as you can. And tighten this guy down we could uh, adjust the fan later by movement on the shaft our goal right now is to get this even so the motor is nice and even in the fan housing so try to again line the edge of this bracket up as much as you can using the edge of the vent holes as a reference and tighten this down okay now that we've got the motor remounted securely in the bracket 
So with the fan housing, with the fan, with the nut side up. And then what we're gonna do is drop the fan shaft down into this. Note the location of your cable harness. Remember that this has to line up with your cable harness, which is on the top. So just drop it right in. Don't worry about the fan hitting the housing for now. We're going to adjust that later. Just get it all centered. And then re-secure the bolts. Once all three bolts are secured, we'll flip it up and align the fan. Now that we've got the motor bracket secured to the fan shroud, we need to set the distance of the fan and lock it down to the shaft. Right now it's the motor's in there and bolted down, but the shaft has to be put in place. The fan shroud has to be brought up right close to the edge of the fan. So we'll put the set screw back in. Line up your flat with the set screw, but don't tighten it yet. And just push the fan back enough so it doesn't contact the housing. And lock it down. just a little bit more push it in a bit make sure it's lined up with the flat on the shaft tighten a little bit give it a spin again it really kick some air when you spin it make sure this is secured it's nice and tight Well, it sure spins a lot easier now with the new motor. Once you get the set screw set and tight to the shaft, rotate the fan housing in different positions. Notice that when I moved it in this position, it started hitting. So that means our motor is settling a bit or something is too close and we have to fine tune the bracket. But it might work fine and rotate in one position, but when you turn it, the motor will settle a bit and hit. You don't want to get it up in there and fire it up and have it grinding away. So let's fine tune this, make sure it spins free in all positions. Now that we've checked for free rotation in all access positions, of the fan. Let's make sure nothing got in there while we were working on it. And then we'll blow it out with compressed air. Now's the time to clean it, so it'll be good to go. Let that slide it into the position. Slide it back in the channels. Now that we've got this fan housing in place, reconnect your cable assemblies and then screw the 90 back in place before you test it. Now that the fan is screwed back in place and the retaining bracket in a 90 degree and the cables are reconnected, everything's secure, make sure it's fan free, and then reinstall the cover. Bottom lip goes in. And install the four screws. Once you've got the cover reinstalled, turn your breakers back on.
let's give it a test. After you install the new motor, be sure to run an airflow verification test. The system will need to recalibrate because the old motor took so much more effort and energy to turn the shaft since the shaft was binding on the bearings. So to run an airflow verification test, touch the screen, go to menu, arrow down, go into the service hat mode, press and hold that until it turns green. That takes a while. Well, now we're waiting. Go into installation, airflow verification test. And it takes about five minutes to run the test. During the airflow verification test, the system will run the fan through different speeds and calculate the static pressure to the amount of RPM required to move a given amount of air. The system's programmed to turn over 1400 CFM of air, and that's its goal. The static pressure is, as long as it's under one, that's a little high. In this case, it's just a matter of the age of the house. Uh, the low RPM is right. We're moving calculated minimum CFN 362. So it's all good. Next, and we're done. No faults. Now that the airflow verification test went well, this project's complete. It's quiet, no more fault 41. It's all good. So altogether, this project cost me $250. And that was for the price of a, a, a new motor with an ECM module. It was a new motor open box that I found on an HVAC surplus liquidator on eBay. And they had a 30 day return policy, so we were okay. The motor was like, no. What happens with uh, so many parts, inexperienced installers, repair guys, new guys that are starting, they'll keep changing parts till they find what to, something that makes it work. And then everything goes back in the truck and they don't want to deal with it, it goes to a liquidator. So that is the thing to do. Before I started, I got quotes to do the same job but that ranged between $1,500 to $1,700. So we saved quite a bit of money. So it's worth your effort and time to do it yourself. Time to find another project.